How you doing? Yeah. Stressed. I wouldn't believe. Salmon and scallops. Raspberry peach vinaigrette, and I'm stuck on the door. Veggies and broccoli crown. I think if I repeat this stuff enough times, I'll remember them all. Kitchen's really cozy. I like that. Apples and tomatoes. Sheet pans. We decided to go with a Halloween theme. Seeing how it is, Halloween's right around the corner and everything. And it's, it's nice, man. You can ask him about anything. He knows it like the back of his hand and knows what he's serving. So I helped him a little bit maybe with what would go with what. But it's pretty much his ideas, and he added a lot of the Halloween theme to it. So Norman brought this idea to me, and you know, I'm all for it, I think giving the kids especially a chance to see what different working conditions are like. You know, this is not the ideal kitchen to work in. I had the spice puff skin best design, so already. Um, you want me to cut these tomatoes? Yeah, that'd be nice. We've been in the kitchen all week, really? prepping the food all week. Is that... Do we have olive oil? I went in the kitchen to check on him today. Okay. Right, I'm making garnish. Make the plate look nice, pretty. <laughs> Everything's prepped already, so we just have to get it and fully prepare it cook it a little bit, just add, um, add garnish to it, add some seasoning to it, just to freshen it up. I've been talking with Chris all week long, and my thing is, you have to remember this is somebody's business. It's a big trust thing to, to say, sure, come on in, whatever you want to do. I'm so hungry, Carlos. I'm sorry, you didn't get to eat? No, I'll set it up. Please make 20 copies. Mm -hmm. They are not hurry, turned hurry, hurry, in. Okay. Time, what time is it? I don't have a watch. Wait, so your parents aren't going to be here? No. So I can say a bunch of retarded shit about you? Don't. I'd probably be dumb. Carl's probably kick you out, so don't do that. Chris? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Welcome to my 10th grade first gateway exhibition of my, of my time at the Met. <laughs> And um, my name is Chris, and this will be my, my gateway. The first thing I'm going to do on my agenda would be my um, activity. And my activity, I can set that up. Oh my god. Can you pass me that board without dropping it? My, a lot of my project work was like nutrition between the Met Cafe and Wendy's. So I chose this project to do it like this. It's on the back of my paper that has like my pie chart that's really bad, on the back of it. Like if you went to Wendy's, like say if you went to Wendy's and you're really hungry, pick an exact meal off what would you want. Like, ex like when you went to Wendy's, what would you take? Okay. Okay. Now that everyone's picked something, whole sway. I'm gonna pick um, you up. Two double cheeseburgers with French fries and a spicy chicken sandwich. <laughs> Is it a style of this somewhere? Okay, ready? Okay, on the, two junior hamburgers or cheeseburgers? Two junior bacon cheeseburgers. Two of them? Yeah. Okay, look. <laughs> Already you went over on your sodium like a thousand. Yes, Sherry. So sodium kind of adds fat? Like no, like fat. sodium is just bad for you. Okay, <laughs> like, so how much sodium should you have? In a daily basis, yeah. is a thousand. That's it. What does sodium do to your body? High blood pressure. That's bad. Like you have a heart attack more. So I'm, I'm going to explain the rest of this full, this later. After, after the little thing I just did. I'm over to the ninth grade year, you know, the portfolio box. I left it here over the summer with all my ninth grade work in it, and when I came back this year, it wasn't here. So, like, ninth grade work, that, like, the, guy, like, the stuff you want to see, I don't have. I'm noticing the dates on this timeline are April and May. Mm -hmm. You weren't sticking to your deadlines? No, I wasn't. I, I, I didn't even look at it. I, that's one of my biggest, I'm really hard with that deadline. Like so, because I move from one thing to the other thing instead of just getting one thing straight done, like I'll uh, put thing, one thing to side and move to another thing, and then I get confused and things get backed up. Sure. In the last few weeks, I've been trying to get it up as soon as possible, like get all my work cleared and on track, and it's been working out kind of good. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay, I, I basically have nothing from my ninth grade, so I'll just go right to my tenth grade because I have a lot of stuff on that. Um, my LTI, my, te my 10th grade LTI is in the kitchen, the Met Center kitchen. We make all kinds of stuff, and it's all from different like cultures and stuff like that. So like we do a lot of cooking. My project 
was to take a fast food restaurant and compare it to the like to compare it to the food at the Met Kitchen. Like I, I wanted, I, the whole per project per part of the project was to show that how fast food restaurant is like you like you should probably because like most of the students at the school would rather go and eat at Wendy's than to sit here and eat at the kitchen. And the, all the Met Kitchen wants to show is like how unhealthy the food they're going to eat. Like to show how like there's there's always a better or nutritious way to eat. Like I read a book called Fast Food Nations. I don't have the book with me. I have proof that I read it. Whenever I'd go through something that I think was important that I that I should look up on or learn more about, I wrote it on this. Then it got filled up and I had to go to my notebook. So I wrote a lot of stuff in this notebook right here about the book. And there was a lot of creepy stuff in that book, like people really don't want to know about their food. Like, you know, red dye, like red dye is put into any type of food, like candy and stuff like that. That red dye is made up of a pigment, which, it's like this. They take 7,000 of these, 7,000 of this bug. It's found in Peru. It's called Dactyliopodus coccus, big scientific name. And it's a small insect found in Peru. They take about 7,000 of these, crush them up into this little pig, this pigment, which is like a pound, and they just add water to it and make red dye. So that's all the red dye is, is a bunch of bugs grounded up. It just shows that you can be tricked by stuff like that. You get what I'm talking about? Yes, Ben. What's the background of the author? The background of the author? What's his profession? Oh, I never got anything on the background of the author of Fast Food Nations. Do you know how he gathered his research about the meatpacking industries or about the flavoring Yeah, he, he, most of the stuff he was personal. He went to the place and found out the information on his own. So how would you, as a, you know, someone who really wants to know whether the material you're reading is accurate, I how do you know whether it's true or not? I could probably like email or write to the author. I could do that. You could inquire about his research methods. That'd be a great idea to write down for your next quarter. Okay. I can um, do that. How else could you do it? Like I was thinking, cause like he makes he when he writes about slaughterhouses, he makes them sound like they're the worst thing in the world. He like he was telling like when you go there, you gotta wear these big like rubber pants, cause like on the killing floor, that's where they kill. It's like a pool, like it's ankle deep of blood. You're walking through it. He makes it sound like it's the worst place in the world. Like it's not always the thing. You can so do. inquiring about his research methods is a good idea. What else could you try and get a sense of how accurate his book is? I could read other books on like slaughterhouses and stuff like that, or yep. just like food itself. It's a great idea. Chris, this stuff is wonderful social reasoning, great research, which I think you should continue and extend. Mm -hmm. However, uh, your exhibition seems to be drawing to a close. Oh, it is. So instead of focusing on one aspect of the project, okay, sorry you should about probably that. cover more of the learning goals. Sorry, I'm really sorry. I'm I'm going to explain about my research paper now. That I I actually had fun doing this research paper. Um, I did my research paper on trans fat. Trans fat is um, saturate is a type of saturated fat, because like scientists, they because when they put food on the market, like in bags and boxes and stuff in cans, it doesn't last very long. They have expiration dates, but they decided by put adding more hydrogen atoms to um, oil and fat molecules that's in the food will make the food last longer. But by the, by them doing that. They're making the, like, okay, hold on. Let me slow down for a second. Okay. Like, fat is not bad for you. Like, fat is good for you. Your, your body needs fat to run. Without it, you'd probably just fall over and stop moving. Fat is like an energy source. Nothing's going to hold this up. Okay. Um, Okay. What are your symbols? There? Okay, this right. I didn't write a key on it. That's right. Um, the black is carbon. They're, the molecules consist of carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms. These are hydrogen atoms, the clear ones, and black would be carbon. And when they mix together, they make like an anti-water thing. But um, this is an unsaturated. Unsaturated means like unsaturated. That word means not filled, really. Like unsaturated. Like saturated means filled up, like a sponge. When you throw a sponge in the water, it fills up, and when you take it out. Like if you were to pour water on it, it just rolls off. That's saturated. When it's unsaturated, that means it's dry, like a dry sponge, because you can add water to it and it will fill up. This is uns unsaturated oil, um, uh, unsaturated oil molecule. It's unsaturated because normally it's supposed to have two hydrogens and one carbon. See how it's uns it has one? That means it's unsaturated. But if these were ever to fill up with a hydrogen, like two more hydrogens would be added to this, this would turn into a saturated fat and it would be bad. 
the difference, the difference, the, what makes unsaturated um, molecules bad from saturated is this, double bonds. Unsaturated um, fats eventually get double bonds. Double bonds are like a crinkle in the molecule. It's, where'd it go? Okay, double bars are like a ridge that's in the, um, it's in it. So that when, so, it, so, so they can't build up. Because if they build up and start getting really tugged close to each other, they have a harder melting down point. So like, I'm um, trying to explain, like, a, like snow. When it hits your hand, it melts instantly. But if you have a snowball in your hand, it's not going to melt right then and there. Because there's a whole bunch of them added together and like crunched together. So by doing that, all of the molecules are saturated. And saturated fat is really bad for you because it sticks to you inside. It clogs up into big clumps and gets stuck to your insides. There's all kinds of problems you can get from this stuff clogging up, and it could eventually kill you. It's trans fat. That's what basically trans fat is. And he, well, um. See, it's great to it's see not. you get this excited about molecular structures and get this excited about what it means to have saturated, unsaturated, polyunsaturated fats. Mm -hmm. I think there's, there's like another level of understanding that you could take it to as well. Mm -hmm. you know, okay. so I'd like to see you start answering some, like, you're definitely answering some questions and you're getting into some interesting stuff, but I think that what you'll find, particularly when you start getting into more scientific stuff, is that every level of research has another level of research. Keeps on going further. So, further. yeah, it's, you know, it's like peeling Never the skin off the stuff. onion going further. And I think you're talking in somewhat general terms about it sticks up your insides or something like that. And I'd like to see you get a little more specific about is that acting in the circulatory system or is that in how your body stores it or is mm -hmm. that in what it does to your liver? Just a little more specific there. Okay. Um, Check right here. Uh, my personal growths. Um, areas think that I think I've grown in. I think, I think I've grown um, in maturity because I, I don't crack jokes in, on racists and everything like that, like how I used to. And I'm like, I take things kind of more seriously. I'm getting better at taking things seriously. Quiet. And then um, areas I need to grow in, I need to grow in my time management because I'm jumping in between stuff and not getting things done like right then and there, not just working on one solid thing. As promised, I was going to pass this out, hand it, but I think that it's, you should comment on that okay. specifically. Uh, okay. And I would take this very seriously. Yes, I know. Okay. During, don't laugh. Okay, um, during the school year, well, during a couple, like a couple weeks ago, me and a couple friends of mine, we played a joke, a really bad joke, on another student of ours. She's like Mrs. Perfect. So we played like a joke on her for like a whole day thing, like, okay. We, we hit her gateway binder. That was bad. I already knew that. It's a lot of bad things about that. But we hit it, and we were going to wait for her to like sweat it out at the end of the day, or when she sweated out, we were going to give it back to her and say it was a big joke. But then she left early. And the next day it snowed, and the next day I didn't come to school when everyone else came to school. And then it was a big problem, because no one knew where this gateway binder is. Any questions? How ready do you feel that you are for, for Senior Institute? Because it's not, it's, not, it's not just about the quality of your work, which has incredible potential. It's not there yet, but it has great potential. But then when you get into your personal growth and the fact that next year, ninth and 10th graders will be looking up to you as a leader in this school, that's not, that's not what we're looking like for. Like last year, I used to get in trouble for a lot of things. But like this year, I tried not to get in trouble. I was doing a really good job at it until this opportunity came take it like, uh, like I'm sorry Chris this is about going into senior institute so you might like playing jokes play jokes and spend the rest of your time in 10th grade you're gonna come to a point in your life where there are gonna be things you like that can take you on you have a lot of passion you have passion for science you have a passion for trans fat you have a passion for the food I don't know if that's a passion for trans fat <laughs> you have a passion for learning though that's clear that can take you forward Passion for playing jokes on other people, for hurting people's feelings? Where is that going to take you? Nowhere. I grew up. It's not my fault. <laughs> my gateway went from like good to trash because like, like they were like they were getting mad at me because like I did the um prank on Rachel when I ransomed her on Gateway Binder, and um they were they were trying to like sit there and try to like make me say I'm sorry and like make me feel bad, which I don't. I'm not gonna lie to them. Like, I don't feel bad for many things. That's how, it's just how I am. I laugh at stuff like that. You gonna get back with Diane? 
I don't know, I did ask that, that Chelsea girl. But Chelsea kind of said no. Did you ask how Chelsea said no and go to Diane? What are you doing, Dan? I've been on solitary for so long, I get a five-minute walk, man. I'm lazy. I'd rather be out partying with my friends than doing schoolwork. It's true. Like, I would like to go to college, but I'm doubting myself because, like, I know I wouldn't get, I would be way too distracted. That's the only, like, that's the only thing I'd, I'm worrying about college. I'd have to put a lot of time into work. I want to go to college because there's dormitories. Yeah. Hey, Chris, is that a picture of you in the front desk? Yeah, I went to Kentucky with my girlfriend, and uh -huh. her mom bet me 20 bucks I wouldn't dress up. Yeah, hey, you look great. You look did, great. Did you get the 20 bucks? Yeah, 20 bucks all matters. That's all that matters. Yeah. Good. And you look wonderful. My parents want me to go to college more than anything because they didn't get to go to college because my mom had me when she was um, 14, 15. So my parents really want me to go to college. <laughs> but yeah, so, so like, like when I went through middle school, they'd get on me every day for not like, because they want me to be like this high expectation student, straight A's, and I'd pass with like C's and D's. So that's not very good at home. So at this school, it, like I don't get yelled at as much because they don't get a report card that shows letters, <laughs> and they don't really understand what a transcript is. So it's kind of like, it's kind of cool. I don't get yelled at that much at home. I have a lot of really important things to talk about. All right, first calendar stuff. If everyone could get their calendars out, I'm going to give you a checklist right away. The focus for last week was everyone's autobiography, and I was very, very impressed. I was very, very impressed. This was probably some of your best writing. I went from laughing hysterically to feeling really, you know, sad to almost wanting to cry. So uh, thank you for sharing that. So I want you to focus when I give you this packet. I'm going to give everyone their gateway contract. Look at what still needs to be completed because there's going to be a part of your exhibition this quarter. What have you completed, you know, towards your, your third and fourth quarter expectations for your panel suggested work? Yeah. Chris, grab whatever you need and have a seat instead of standing I really there. I don't need anything. You said you wanted to meet with me? Yeah, I do want to meet with you. I don't need anything to meet. Okay. Sit, please. My I'll mentor, Norm. Norman wants to do another You project. have to finish your project first. Yeah, no, you can't he switch keeps it. He's on giving me stuff to do. What, like, is he, what is he telling you? To because do? this is really, really like, it's not even a restaurant. There's this lady. She's a fine cook. She's always in the newspaper and always on TV. She owns a house, like a, like a 200, 200 year old house. Mm -hmm. And like in each room, there's like this really classy setup with one table, two chairs, candles, like all the curtains, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And she lives at this house and cooks there every Thursday, Friday, Friday and Thursday. It's a really fancy place. Norman wants me to make a recipe that I'm gonna give to this lady. The lady's gonna see if it can work it in. Then the day I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna cook the dinners that night for these people. He knows this woman? Yeah, he's a really friend, good friend of mine. I need to speak with Norman about it. Okay. However, I don't want you to lose focus of what your initial project is. Where's the sheet that I gave you for your exhibition for this thing? It, it, Look at Met 201. Do you have 25 journal entries? No, I don't right, know you, my journal is. You need to work on your organization. You telling me that you don't know where your journal is, you're a sophomore. I know. You're trying to be a junior. You're trying to be a senior institute. Next year, you're supposed to tell ninth grade and 10th grade students, kid, what do you mean you don't know where your journal is? You don't know where your journal is. I'm not good at keeping stuff. But you were doing a much better job at the beginning of the year. It seems that something's happened at some point, and it was just like, like, I can't, can't get the habit of doing it. I'll do it one day, I forget about the next day, and I'll stop doing it again. You I did it last myself. year. Was that because Lynn was just always on you about your LTI logs? Yeah, and they were there. Like, yeah. when, I couldn't yeah. leave unless I went in the room, and they were there. And they can't, I can't do that in the kitchen because it's too busy. Okay, this is what we'll do. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, when you come back, because you come back early, that's going to be your requirement. Sit down and either do your LTI log mm -hmm. or do an LTI journal entry. Mm -hmm. You know, if, ands, or buts about it. Yep. I can remember that. And okay. you, but you need, to, you need to remind yourself. You need to help yourself. It's Tuesday. I need to do my LTI journal entry. I need to do my LTI log. Okay. 
All right, so the next. All right, so where I met 201, your behavior has improved without question. You've demonstrated leadership um, with, with advisory discussions. You know, you're always involved, okay? Your deadlines, Chris, that's a problem. It's lemon. Yeah, that's a problem. So if we look at here, your project should have been done in February, we're in March. I don't got that many steps left. Talk about your remaining steps. You really don't, and you should have been done by now. I know, I'm just like milking it. The, the biggest thing I'm concerned about, Chris, is your research paper, which is still not done. Yeah, no, I'm gonna read over the paper with a highlighter today, You've again. Been, I mean, you got that information two weeks ago from Mike Harrison. I know, I'll read it, but don't have a highlighter, so I'll just forget about the stuff. Off I'm gonna see if you, if you can go to Brown this, um, this afternoon. Why? To work on it this afternoon. You should go to work at Brown. It's like, oh. yes you can. I'm calling Mike. Right now. Uh, I really don't want to. You have yeah. work to do. What else do? You, what, what would you? What would you do? You can't just throw me in college and expect me to do work. I'll throw you in a college with Mike, and I expect you to do work. Can I just work here? And he's going to help you. It's a difference. It's not like it, no. It's different. Okay. I gotta be. I don't have a bus pass with me. We'll get you tokens. Like I have to go see a movie. You have to get a movie. Yeah, and a library. I'm not using my library card. I'll use someone else's. Why aren't you using yours? Because I have a two hundred dollar fee on one of mine. You know, if you go talk to them, you can get that down. And they get you on payment. Oh yeah, I went to it. And this. I don't. And all the student opportunity grant. My parents ain't gonna pay for it. I'm not spending my money that I have to like. It's hard. Like I don't have a job. I can't find a job, especially where I live. If you're gonna if you're gonna work where I live, you're either working at Best Eaton or the corner store. And there's sit, only one corner sit, store. Sit. I'm tired of looking up at you. There's nowhere to work down there, so I'm not paying off the stupid. You do understand book. you do understand that you have a debt to the library? Do you have books that you did you give the books back? But they'll catch me. Bring it tomorrow. Hold on. We'll go together. I don't want to. <laughs> I just don't want to return the book. Why? I've had it so long, it's mine now. No, it's not oh. yours. It belongs to the library. You want to give it back. Chris. Okay. Bye. Yep. I'm not going to pass my exhibition. Have faith, young Jedi. I have faith in very few things. I don't want to meet with John. This is my mom. She's mad at me. She's already grumpy. Look at her. See her hands? They're gripping that wheel like road rage. But I love her. I'm getting a tattoo on my chest with my mom's face on it and a little locket. That's my mom. I love her. I do. But now I'm home and in my room. This is my lovely room. Big dump. Here's my ferret. And here's my buddy, my ferret. That's my kitty. His name's Lucky. It's the last person in this house I actually respect. And I, yeah, it, it's true, because it, it just turned out that way. But I love him so much. Lucky! Lucky, look at you. Look at you. Look at you. Lucky. Hmm. Lucky. He's making me look like a retard. Alright, I go. Morning, Lucky. Lucky. Morning. Kitty. Oh, good boy. <laughs> okay. It's like 9 in the morning. I just woke up. And I already guarantee you. My mom's on the computer. My sister's already eating. I guarantee you. My dad is still sleeping. My mom's on the computer. Get you back where you belong. And yes, my sister is getting food. You'll love Glade Car Scented Oil. Because now you can enjoy your favorite Glade scented oils. Okay. Now I'm going to show you Bradford. Outside. 
here my kick ass bike again. Okay. Hey, I know that lady right there. Okay, right now we're at the end of the lane. This is the Bradford Water Tower. See the ladder? We climb the top of that, you can see all the Bradford. It's pretty cool, actually. Most people that come to Big Hill get lost. Because <laughs> Big Hill is just a huge hill. It's like, once you get to the top, you'll see how far you can see, but there's all these paths. If you get lost in here, <laughs> you'll be here until the middle of the night trying to find your way out. <sighs> pretty nice out here. Well, here's the main path. Look, there's hundreds of paths out here. Great place for dirt biking and jeeping. You get a big mess out of everything. That's about it. Overall, it's really fun. Right here is the best pop. You're going like 50 miles per hour. You fly through this puddle. Kicks ass. I'm on a bike. So I'm not doing it. And right here is a fireplace. Anything that's burned it would be burned there. <laughs> the weird part is, like, you feel like a party, like, yeah, dr people getting drunk and trash in the place. But most of the trash, they just burn right there in the fire. So it's weird to meet party people that are civilized <laughs> and are respectful for their trash. It's kind of weird. And here's the swinging rope. You jump from that tree, swing from that rope, you get the way out here where that tree is. You touch that tree. Yeah, I've seen some drunk people do that, fall. Hurt yourself right about there. It was pretty ugly. But you gotta get a good laugh out of it. Come on, it's all about the laughs. Now I'll move on. I won't be surprised if I see a couple of my friends out here. Probably doing drugs. <laughs> or drinking. I wouldn't put that, I wouldn't put that past them. It's an early, it's an early Friday morning with no school. Come on. I love the winter out here. There's no leaves on the trees or anything. It's really nice out. It looks really pretty. Hopefully I run into a deer or something out here. Thursday and got into a confrontation with my parents. Talking to my sister about it and my sister decides to tell me that Chris, did you know that you're my stepbrother? And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, yeah, <laughs> you're my stepbrother. And I'm like, oh, okay. So, in other words, I don't have a dad. <laughs> it sucks. The guy that I was living with my whole life, that I've grown up to call dad, is not my real dad. I don't know my biological dad, basically. My, my dad, my well, Mike, my stepdad, <laughs> that's going to get weird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but my stepdad, this is really, like, okay, once in a while, I'll get, when I get really, really mad at my dad, he'll say some stuff to me that he doesn't want to say, and I'll say some stuff to him that he doesn't want to hear, like, you're not my dad, and now I probably know why that hurts so much. <laughs> so, yeah, so, now... I know I don't have a dad. <laughs> I don't know where he is. Or whatever. And yeah, I have a stepsister and a stepdad, and I live with my mother. I'm a bastard. <laughs> yeah, um. So, on the opposite end of your page, William Shakespeare, sonnet number 29. I know this is a particularly hard one, but that's kind of why I chose it. Chris, any, any words that jump right at you that you want to define? Not really. You want to clarify. Okay. Who's going to look up lark? Lark is a bird. Lark is a bird. Great. I remember receiving a call on a Friday from Chris's dad. I just want to let you know that Chris is in the hospital. He's in Butler. Butler is a mental health hospital. He was crying hysterically. And I guess, you know, he said something that raised some red flags. And Chris spent three to five days there. And then he returned to school. And he openly and willingly told the advisory what would happen. And that it was a tough experience. And that for everyone just to give him a little space while he kind of gets back to reality. And the advisory respectfully gave him that. 
thank you. No, thank you. And your wife for the fun time I had. Thank I don't you. know mistakes. You, have two. you shouldn't have any. Next time that will be my goal. Okay. Yeah, it happened to me. I want to put it away. It's done and over. I'm not going to like drag that on for the rest of my life. It was like, I don't belong here. That person belongs here. The one in the corner shaking. That's the type of people that belong here. Not me. I was in my mind. They weren't. What did I tell you about Biggie Fry? What? How do you spell Biggie Fry? I've been thinking, like, what's more important to me? Like, what's going to help me out in the long run? Like, after the whole Butler Hospital Crazy Chris <laughs> incidents, um, I just started thinking like I don't like I don't want to be like I don't want to be perceived as this. I'm I know I'm better than this. So, and that's when I got into the science part of my work, and I enjoyed that a lot. And from my exhibition and my work quality, everyone else knows I like it a lot. And when I put my mind to like science, like I'm not I'm not the best at everything. But science is one of my things. I can do science. If I wanted to, I could kick everyone else's ass in science in this class, in this school, if I really put my mind to it. You know what? I see your point. That totally takes too long. That would have killed me. It really would have. Like, when, you, when I was in Butler Hospital, like, you notice that you're not that, you have it a lot better than other people do. I was, I can't give out names or situations because I'm not supposed to, or that's the rule. I tell, I tell everyone. <laughs> but um, some people have it a lot worse than other people do, and they should be putting it to work, not just like joking around and wasting it away. Somewhere. Um, I'd say after a matter of a week to maybe 10 days at school, Chris was really back to his normal self, you know. Yeah. There was also a sense of maturity that happened, like, I don't know, kind of like a, like a transformation during that time, where it seemed that, you know, a lot of his little antics from before were totally, like, gone, you know. And actually, they re resurfaced later, but, you know, it was just, he was in this different mode. And I don't know if, if his recovery is, is you know, do the extra attention that he received when he came back to school, just knowing that he was in a, you know, in a caring environment, you know, surrounded by people that really cared for him, from, you know, Christian and Norman in the kitchen on his LTI days, to, you know, Nancy and just everyone kind of just giving him a space and making sure he's okay, to the advisory, to myself, to, you know, um, social work intern that he was meeting with, you know. I think that, you know, I think if you ask me, I think that had a lot to do with, with um, how quickly he was able to regroup for after that. I'm only good at what I like to do. I can't be good at something I do not like, because if I do not like, I refuse. My brain refuses to process what I like. I love science. I like, I like the logic of things. I like asking things why. Like, like, I would sit down and study something like that. I mean, there's nothing we can do about it. Just forget it. It's not that serious. It's schoolwork. OK, that goes there. That goes there. Make sure I don't forget. That goes there. Pretty sure that goes there. Yeah, that goes there. I'm pretty sure I know that goes there. I'd like to welcome everyone to Chris's final Gateway exhibition. He had his first exhibition in January. Chris's panel gave Chris specific feedback on something that he should work on and be able to show by this Gateway exhibition. So, Chris, we're not here. Okay. Um, I'm gonna start off with my activity. And my activity is going to be like a little game of Jeopardy. All right. Here we have a lovely T-bone. I'm going to go with six. five. I'll go with one. I'd go with five, too. Yeah. I'll go with 11. 11? Yeah, I'm going to go with one. Yeah, one six, yeah. Five. 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 It's actually seven. Oh. This would be the brisket. <laughs> this would be four shank. And that would be the hind shank. 
So that was my activity. Um, I read the book, The Jungle, it's about slaughterhouses. So that's where I thought of doing an Angus beef chart because something gets slaughtered. And the whole thing is rounded off because my LTI is in, the ki in that kitchen. Okay, my LTI project. My LTI project at the beginning of the year was to take on a, a fast food chain and compare it with the nutrition of the Met Kitchen. I started off not really knowing what I was doing, so I did a lot of graphs, and I have proof of those if you'd like to, I'll pass them around. From there, I took my, I took my information and decided to put them on poster boards. There's four poster boards, each one's different. One of them's gonna be hung up in each building. This is saturated fat. At Wendy's, six grams of saturated fat in a cheeseburger. Come on, that's bad. <laughs> and from here, see it's less than half. How do, uh, how does the meth cook the burgers compared to the Wendy's? We grill mark them first on both sides, and then we put them on a sheet pan, and we put some water in the sheet pan, and we put them in the oven and cook them. All the fat comes out of them, it's in the water, and we just dump the water out and it's all set. And we serve the burgers. Cook them in the water and let the fat drain out. Do you think that changes the taste enough that people go buy stuff from Wendy's for a different taste? That's, yeah, that's probably why the taste different. Because a lot, a lot of people would, would rather eat at Wendy's because the food tastes better. But like we, the food may not taste the best at the Met, but it's there. It's, it has its reasons. It's, for everything, there's a reason. This is trans fatty acid. Um, trans fatty acids reduce good cholesterol and increase bad cholesterol. Any food with partially hydroxinated oils have trans fatty acids in them. Okay, this would be my one on cholesterol. There are two types of cholesterol, good and bad. High density lipoprotein, which is good, and low density lipoprotein, which is bad. Your liver produces enough cholesterol for your body on its own. Certain foods that you can eat add too much for it to handle. And that, and which leads to heart attacks and strokes. Any questions? This would be the bloodstream. Okay. These are cells. These are LDL lipoproteins. These are HDL lipoproteins, high density lipoproteins. These go through your body and flush the fatty deposits out. So it's like, so it cleans them. So you don't like, so you don't have deposits, so your arteries don't get clogged up. That's what those would do. I got everyone? I don't want to lose anyone. Okay. And now this would be with trans fatty acid. When food with trans fatty acid enters your body, it would get broken down. Trans fat, when trans fatty acid enters your bloodstream, it raises your plasma level of your blood. That's like a temperature. When that happens, it's like a chemical reaction. It evaporates these. It lowers the concentration of these, which are originally the good ones. The, 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 the fatty deposits would get bigger because there's less to take away. There's less HDL to take away. So they would just start building up. Like when you miss out on work, you don't catch up. It's going to keep on building up. Like that. Any questions? Yeah, that was my research paper. I worked on that a lot. Most of my, um, I, I got a lot of research thanks to Mike. Um, he brought me to Brown University and I got to use medical journals and a lot of books. So I'd like to thank him. Personal growth. I think I grown a lot from last year and earlier this year. I think that my work is getting a lot, lot better and more professional. I'm looking more into wanting to do stuff than just rather having to do it. I, I feel that I would rather look into it because it's interesting me than just sit down and yeah, I'll do it because I have to and I need to pass. Um, you like to say anything, Carlos? How about we give Chris a hand on this exhibition? Okay, I'd like to go around and give Chris some feedback. He's getting better every time he comes in. He's being more informative. He's letting, he's explaining it better so everybody understands what's going on. Um, just needs to add a little bit more. He gets a few things here and there. This was your best one so far. I've been to most of yours. And this is the first time you've really dressed up like that. 
I think those posters that you made were pretty cool, actually. So, uh, and the last exhibition I went to, your other gateway exhibition, was uh, kind of bad. You weren't really prepared and everything, so you were all prepared and you had everything all set up and you knew what you're doing, so nice job. Mike. Uh, I had the privilege of, of being at your exhibition last year and now this year. And uh, the, the change and the improvement, it's like night, it's like night and day. Um, I think you could have improved in, in some of your explanations of some of the science stuff. That maybe that just comes with more practice or um, you know, more coaching or whatever. But I think you did a fantastic job. I want to know if I can talk to you when I'm done with this, so I don't likely. Okay. At your first exhibition this year, it was, a, it was the feedback that you got was you needed to change your behavior. You did that. At your first gateway, there was more feedback about your behavior and then the depth of your work. You did that. At your third quarter exhibition, which was, you know, I was, I was blown away, and I was thinking to myself, that would be a very difficult exhibition to top. And you have done that. So I'm very proud of the work that you've done this year, Chris. It is, it is just as Mike said, night and day. And the one thing that I, I always wanted from you is not to change who you are, because I love your personality, but just for you to not be able to distinguish when it's time to be serious mm -hmm. and when it's time to go about your work and be proud of your work, and you have, you have totally done that. Obviously, because I, I always have high expectations, there's always things that I, I feel that you can get better at. Do I feel that you have shown enough growth in the past year to move into Senior <laughs> Institute, without question. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Are there any more donuts in that box? Yeah, the other donuts left in the box. <laughs> Congratulations, Chris. Good Thank job. You. All right. <laughs> if everyone can please give Chris, Chris your feedback for us. What? Good job, Good job. Okay. okay. Like next next year, I'm gonna do. I want to work with brain chemistry and how it apps off. That's called cool. Gonna work on human brains. Oh, with the message. No, apps off. Well, she it's, said it. it's, right, go. it's called madness in a bottle. Hey. What? My parents are here. Who's my dad? Well, I guess we'll never know. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. He's been there since I was little and all, for all I can remember. So what the hell? He's dead, I guess. The biscuit's starting to boil. Try okay. to lower the temperature. Just lower that down on the simmer. Actually, I'm going to push it up to the side there so we can do a couple other things. OK. Can't do this to the chef. Delicious. Wonderful. It really was very good. Well, mine is still wonderful, thank you. <laughs> the combination of taste was very, very good. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> you did a great job. I worked with Chris all day, so I can't believe how happy I am that he's actually was able to do this and see how it is. You know. Very, very good. I'm very impressed with a young man that could put on such a wonderful dinner. Did you try the bisque or even the jalapeno? It's, it's like spicy bread. I can't imagine him like 10 years down the line. What a future he has.